Okay, on the left-hand side of the screen here, there's a circuit diagram that shows a DC circuit with three resistances and a single battery. Some information is provided, but it's inconsistent. In one case, we know the voltage drop across a resistor. In another case, we know the current through a resistor. And in still another case, we know the resistance of the resistor. And what we're asked to do is fill in the missing information find the readings on the three voltmeters that are, that are drawn, and find the reading on the ammeter that's shown and labeled A2. So to fill in the missing information, we don't need a whole lot. Uh, we don't need to do a whole lot of work, basically, if we have a, an understanding of Ohm's law, which is that the voltage drop across a resistor is equal to the product of the current through it and the resistance of the resistor. That should be sufficient. That and a little bit more knowledge, some more knowledge about how voltage drops and current behave in, in circuits such as these, in parallel branches and series resistors, so on and so forth. By the way, Ohm's law is true if a resistor is called ohmic. Not all resistors behave according to this relationship here. It's not always true for all resistances that the voltage drop across them is directly proportional to the current through them. But if, in fact, that is true, then the resistor is called an ohmic resistor, and we usually concern ourselves with only those in, um, in introductory physics. Okay, so let's start the process of, of figuring this out. This is sort of a puzzle. You just have to look through the circuit and, and ask yourself, where can you use this information first, or where can you use this relationship first? And so coming over to the resistor on the upper left right here, I think that avails itself immediately to this. I know both the current through it and the resistance. So if I just simply multiply those two, according to Ohm's law, what I find is that the voltage drop across this resistor, delta V, would be equal to 20 times 2, which is, of course, 40 volts. All right, now, uh, I believe that's the answer down here, V3. So let's put that down in the box. 40. OK, let's see what else we can figure out. All right, so knowing that that is 40, and I think if we take a look at this resistor over here now, the voltage drop across that one is 10. So actually, that immediately tells me that this battery over here must have a voltage of 50 volts. And if you're wondering how I know that, <clears throat> it's because any charge following this path must get enough of a potential lift from the battery so that it can lose 40 volts across this resistor followed by 10 volts across this resistor. And there are many, many analogies that you can use to describe this effect. I mean, people talk about staircases or, or flights of stairs in a tall building. The basic premise being <clears throat> that if you find yourself walking down 40 steps and then 10 more steps, that means you must have climbed 50 steps over here in the beginning. Now we're going to see this a little more clearly when we, when we frame it in a formal statement known as Kirchhoff's loop rule. But for the time being, I think it's sufficient to just say that around any path, around any closed path in a circuit, the voltage rise must be equal to the total of all the voltage drops that you have. All right, so putting that, that together, I now have my, my battery voltage, which is 50 volts. Let's see what else I can learn. Okay, so now let's take a look at resistor R1. It's in parallel with resistor R2. And one thing we know is that resistances in parallel must have the same potential drops or voltages across them. And therefore, I know immediately that the voltage drop across R1 is also 10 volts. 10 volts here as well. So now we can use Ohm's law again to determine the resistance of this resistor. And you can see it's simple. 
of course, if I have 10 volts and that's equal to 5 amps times an unknown resistance, that resistance must be 2. So that is R, I believe that's, that's R1. It's 2 ohms. Well, let's see if we can figure out R2 now. So um, for R2, we're going to have to determine the current in that branch of the circuit. And I think we can do that because we know the total current up here is 20 amps. And at that junction right there, that current must split up and it's additive according to the law of conservation of charge. So what goes in to this point right here must come out. And we're going to give that a formal name in a day or two as well and call it Kirchhoff's junction rule or his, his node rule. Uh, so what that means is if 20 amps flows into this junction, then 5 amps flows out the bottom, and that must leave us with 15 amps of current for that branch over there on the right. And so with 15 amps and 10 volts, again, that's enough information to use Ohm's law. So now I simply say 10 equals 15 times R. Uh-oh, I have to divide 10 by 15 which I believe is, what, 0.66 repeating. Yeah. Okay, so that is resistance R2. I think while I'm at it, I actually, yeah, I discovered the reading on this ammeter right here. That's 0.66. And then V1 which I discovered a long time ago, but never actually bothered to write down here, is 10 volts. And that pretty much wraps it up. I've got the, all the information that there is. If somebody then asked me to calculate power outputs of these resistors or power input from the battery, I can do that because everything is known. And we're done.